Right. In this video, we are going to firstly, uh, in our project, uh, import a first person controller. This is just for testing. So we're going to switch to the asset library at the top and type third person. And we just want this one here, first person controller V2 quality. So click it and then download it. You can just click install. It's going to go into an add-ons folder here. And that's all we need for now. It does have a little test world. Uh, I think, yeah, it, it, this one has a test world that you can you can check out uh, and hit play. But we're not worried about that at the moment. Um, what we will need to do, though, is go to our project settings and input map and show the built-in actions and add in to UI right, left, up, and down. The left, we're going to need to add the A key. Right, we're going to need to add the D key. Up, we're going to need to add W. And down, we're going to need to add S. And then you can test that. You should be able to move with WASD and look with mouse. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to need to go to uh, this website here. And I'll bring that up. And I'll also put a link down below. Um, oh, what's it called? Cyclops. There we go. I'll bring that up here. Okay, so this is the, the Cyclops level builder. I'll bring that, I'll put a link in there. Over on the right hand side, you'll see releases and you wanna download 1.0.3. Once that's downloaded, you will need to extract that file. So to extract that file, just I've got a whole lot of folders here. Uh, you'll need to find the zip file that you downloaded, click extract all. Then when you extract all, click show extracted files when complete, and that will load this up when it's done. Now you'll need to drag this add-ons folder into Godot. Now when you do this, make sure that you have res selected. You don't want to put it inside another folder in Godot. So we want to do that, drag it, drag it onto res just to be sure. And it will take a little second. Now you're going to get a whole bunch of errors. Easy to fix. First we go project, project settings, and then onto auto load. Uh, you click this button here, and you go into add-ons, Cyclops level builder, and then Cyclops global scene. And then you change this here to say auto load, instead of global scene and add. Then you go to plugins and tick enable. Now the last thing that I'm going to add is a, um, a couple of textures. Now we can we can reload this project, reload the current project, save and reload, just so that everything's all working well. Uh, a couple of textures. So I've also linked these down below, but I'm gonna grab a few of these. I'm gonna pop them into the textures folder here. So let's grab rock, wood crate, um, and uh, beam, gold, there's a few others. Uh, it doesn't really matter what ones you use, you just want to have a couple. You see how I put them in the root directory here because I had res selected. I'm going to select those and move them into textures. There. So there were some textures in there already, just the test textures that were in there. Okay, so now we're going to start a new scene. And we're going to have a 3D scene here. We're going to call this world. And then we're going to add in another node which is just another node 3D. We're going to call this blocks or maybe Cyclops or something like that. Uh, the reason for that is we're going to put other things in the world and we don't want to have them all uh, bundled in with our level editor here. So I'm going to fly through this pretty quickly. Um, there is a way more detailed tutorial on the website here, uh, which you can you can see and go through, it's about 30 minutes and it covers a lot more in depth. Uh, I may end up making a few small mistakes, um, but we'll see how we go. So down the bottom here, we go Cyclops, and then we click Create Block. Now, as far as I know, there's no way to get rid of this widget system here. Uh, we just have to ignore it, okay? If I try to drag it, nothing really happens, okay? So uh, I'm just gonna leave that back at the center for now. This block should be a child of Cyclops. Okay, if I move that, you'll see weird things start to happen. We, we don't want that. You need to select block zero. 
Now you can completely ignore these bits along the top. In fact, don't click them at all, it'll make things kind of messy. This button here will let you move the block that you've got selected. Okay, so green goes up, etc. So I'm actually clicking on the smaller, brighter arrow that's inside. This will let you move it along the plane, green along the bottom plane, etc. Okay, so that's making that. This will let you rotate a cube along a particular axis. Okay, then this here draws a new block. It works based on your grid. So if you have your grid set smaller, you'll be able to make more detail. But I'm just going to take this here. I can once I drag and let go, it then lets me give it the height. To here, bring a wall up. That's weird. You can hit escape to cancel it. And I'll zoom out a little bit. Right, so now I can select other blocks. If I'm like got the world selected, I, I can't select these blocks. Okay, it doesn't let me. I have to select a block, it doesn't matter which one first, and then I can select other blocks. So as long as I've got a select a block in the in the hierarchy here, I can then select other blocks. Now say I want to make a few more walls. I'm going to delete this block, by the way. I don't want that one. So then I just have to click on one of the other ones. I want to make a few more walls. So I'm going to go into top view, but I'm going to select that wall first. This is the high one. I want them all to be the same height as this. So I'm going to go ahead now and go, I'm in top view. I can just draw these walls. They will all be the same height. I actually want to leave space here for a door though. Okay. And then I could draw, oops, if it does that, it's kind of context sensitive. So you may have to, if you're looking at it from a funny angle, it's going to do some odd things. There we go. Do that, I'll bring that up. So I've got that out there. All right now, from here, I can also make prisms. So let's say I want to make a weird shape up here. When you're done, push enter and you can bring that up. So it will make your polygon, push enter, bring it up. This can be quite useful for making, uh, well, non-standard shapes, hills, mountains, things in the background, um, curved walls. Uh, you cannot make convex shapes though. No, you cannot make concave shapes. Okay, so if I try to do this and then go in here, I can't do it. Okay, there's, there's ways to do it but it's not, uh, it's not through here. You kind of have to make it in parts. And this is just because this is based off older, um, I'm not sure what they're called, BSP or like Quake style editors uh, where the level design was a little bit different. Now I want to pull these walls out. So what I can do, instead of making new walls here, I can actually put a slice on here, uh, which is this button here, the clip tool. So it says click on surface of block to place first cutting point. Click again to place second cutting point. This will define the plane the block will be cut along. If you press enter at this point, the block will be cut. So I'm going to select here. And I'm going to select here. Now if I push enter, the block gets cut straight down the middle there. So I can make sure that I'm on the move tool. I can select that. It's now two separate blocks. If I go into face mode, this is face mode, edge mode, Vertice mode, this works very similar to Blender. I'll click on that face and then I can move it along. So I can pull that wall out. I can pull it out more. Over here, we've got a few other tools, some stair tools. Maybe I want to make some stairs going up here. So I will build some stairs here, there, there. Oh, it's not on stair mode. There we go. I'll put the stairs. If it's not in the right angle, you might just have to kind of view it from a different direction. Now, once I've got the stairs done, oops, I can do that as well. I want the stairs here, I want them to go up. You'll see there that as I scroll my mouse wheel, the stairs change direction. If I hold control, I get more stairs. And if I hold shift, I throw control and shift, the stair height changes. And then I can click. 
So there I've got some stairs going up. Now that's really enough for what I wanted to demo at the moment, except for this tool here, which I think is slightly broken because um, it says here, click on a surface to begin creating the base of a cylinder, release the mouse to enter height drawing mode. If you have tube options selected, you'll draw the second ring instead. I'm not sure how to not have tube options selected because when I go to click and drag, and then it always gives me the tube option. Uh, it's probably not going to be a problem um, for, for most of your level design. You can just kind of ignore that bit in the middle, <laughs> but it is there. Keep in mind that these are all individual slices. So you can grab them and take them away. So you can make curved walls using basically half of a cylinder and then just removing the rest. You can hold shift to select multiple of them. Delete will delete them. So you can make curved walls doing that. Then you could get these edges here. And we just have to select one block to get them all. I could select this face like that and pull it out however I want it and so on. Okay, it doesn't matter if they overlap. Lastly, there is the material brush, which we'll get back to in a second. Instead, what I want to do is go ahead and in our add-ons, in our FPC, that's first person controller, grab the character scene and drag it into here. And this should, well, we'll have to save that as well. We should be able to test this. This should just work. Okay, the collisions are there for you. Of course, I've got no sun or lighting in my scene. I can quickly add that. Yeah. Oops. Add sun to scene. Add environment to scene. Okay, so I've got that. It's all good. Now, I do want to make the materials. Uh, I'm Alt F4ing out of that, by the way, if you can't figure out how to, to quit. Uh, I want to make some materials. So I'm going to make them, uh, I'll make them in a new folder, create a new folder called materials. I'm going to do this very simply. You'll be able to play with it a little bit more. Create new resource. And I'm looking for material. There's a whole lot of materials, but the one that we want is standard material 3D. I'll click create. I'll give it a name. This one's going to be a box. And then in textures, I'll just open the textures folder. The only thing I'm going to play around with here is the albedo. That's the that's the color. I'm going to drag wood crate onto the texture box there. That shows up. I click save up the top here, and that will save that texture. Uh, I'm going to create another material. Create a new material, a resource. It's a standard material 3D. I'm going to call this one stone. Click save. Open the albedo. Find the stone texture, the rock gold, drag that onto there, and then I'll click save at the top. Now going back into here, I can use this paintbrush and switch to the materials panel at the bottom. I may need to move, I'll need to move this up a little bit. You'll see I've got box and stone. I'm just going to make another box here, just a one by one unit, and it will automatically UV map for you, so you don't have to do it can blender, I'll put that crate there. So I can move this crate, move it to here. So I've got my crate in the corner, looks good. Uh, for the rest of the areas though, I'm gonna get the brush, click this, and I can paint those. Now, if you read the tool tips for it, you can just kind of hold and drag, and it will drag on all of those. So that, that's pretty good there. If you read the tool tips for it, um, click and drag on surfaces. Shift X will sample the properties of the face under there. You can also individually paint faces. Uh, I don't remember how. You may have to look at the larger video on how to do that. Uh, but now I've got my UV maps and there. Now these textures, they are um, linearly interpolated, uh, meaning or like filtered. Okay, they blur it. We're going to fix that by going finally into the materials, into the stone texture, and then, where is it? Might be on here. Nope. 
Um, used to be under something called flags. Can't see where it is now. Filter properties. Uh, let me just filter sampling. That would be it. Filter nearest. Okay, I'm going to do, I'll click save on that. I think it saves automatically, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'll double click the box one, sampling, filter, oops, nearest, and click save. And then I'll run it. You'll see this will look a lot more uh, pixelated, which is kind of the style that those textures were going for. Now, you don't have to use that. If you're using a more realistic texture, you probably want to have uh, the, the linear um, sampling or filtering on it. I can walk up here. In this case, I've got a jump. So let's see, I can jump over to here. All of these things work really well. This here is a lot better for building levels, uh, areas that you want the player to be able to engage with than doing it in Blender. Okay, the, the mapping here is much faster. To do this, what I've done here in Blender and have it actually look good, um, is a nightmare. However, Blender is going to be way better if you're doing environmental stuff. Obviously, this is going to be a lot harder to have bumps and ridges and something for outside or modeling a tree or anything like that. Um, you can do it in it, and that's pretty much how they did it in a lot of older games. Uh, but it would look really blocky, chunky, may not work well. Okay, the ideal situation would be you probably use a combination of both of them.